love playing games. The fun, the tension, the natural high of a win. It's a lot like the buzz we get when we look for a mate. Especially now, the gamification of dating through apps has got us hooked. Elise. Oh, Elise. how are you with is that French? Yous? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's from Marseille. Oh, he's tanned. We're obsessed, downloading more and spending more. Cupid's arrow has been replaced by an <laughs> algorithm. Oh. It is like, but it's like in Tinder when you swipe and it says that you get a match. It's like, oh, do you want to keep playing? Like it does turn it into a game. Zoe, Rachel and Lily are typical 20 something single young women looking for love. I once actually matched with um, a porn star and I didn't even realise it was a porn star. We didn't end up going on a date because he, he started asking about my sexual preferences and I thought, well, he's told me about his life, so I'll, you know, I will be honest about mine and I said what my boundaries were. And he actually said, I don't think it's going to work out. Your boundaries are far below what it should be. <laughs> Tinder is it's like something your mum told you never to do. Like, yeah, never meet up with strange the men on the internet. Yeah. And then we're just there like, oh, maybe I should do it. But like, <laughs> men seem nice. Some of them are nice, some of yeah. them are not nice. <laughs> A revolution that began with Tinder just six years ago has transformed the way the sexes meet. There's been an extraordinary cultural shift. The old stigma has gone. And now the expectancy is, if you're single, you've just got to be on one of these dating apps. And that explains why we spend so much money on them, more than we do on other entertainment, like films or music. The UK spend on the top 10 dating apps reached its highest in the third quarter of 2018 increasing by 60%, rising sharply from £14.4 million in the third quarter of 2017 to £23.1 million for the same period this year. Excluding games, Tinder generated more consumer spend in the UK than any other app in 2018, even more than Netflix and Spotify. And the UK's increase in spending on dating apps is higher than the global average. The old protocols and elaborate dating rituals of our forefathers and mothers have gone. All the fun of the fair has been replaced with the dopamine rush of a Tinder match. It's a numbers game, low risk, high yield. You log on straight away, um, you can find the guy like within five minutes, like you could you can be chatting with someone for five minutes and then half an hour later you could actually be, you know, in the house. For me it's a lot easier yeah. than actually going out there because you can sit I can sit here and get up my phone and find a hundred odd people and it's easier to just go through them like a catalogue and just be like hi 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 than actually going out to meet them. Updating promises a world of erotic social mobility where you can hook up with anyone regardless of class or status. But is this true? The potential matches you're offered are selected by a computer program. Is it just an echo chamber? But the technology does have the ability to skew our love lives, sometimes in completely random ways. Christopher is out and proud a confident gay man until one day he left his dating app open one day my tender was just open to girls accidentally mm -hmm. and i was just kind of going through it and was just kind of just took it as it is and was just like hey how are you people messaging back and it was just nothing nothing that i really thought about or oh, i'm gonna delve into this or i'm gonna completely change this it was just like okay well why not and the apps are helping you to do that it's not something you would do. oh yeah in real life? Yeah, 100%. The technology is impacting all of us as individuals like Christopher or whole strands of society, young and old. For example, teens are having less sex than ever before. According to one report, that's because they're too busy having online relationships which never move to the physical level. And STIs in the over 40s is increasing. That's because divorce rates are rising. But these people are having more dates and more sex because it's never been easier. There is no subject that has been talked about or written about more 
love and romance, relationships and sex. It's what defines us. But with every swipe, we're learning something else about our developing dating habits. In a study of 150,000 users of the site eHarmony, researchers at the Oxford Internet Institute discovered 95% of users send requests to at most 12 people a week, and they reply to less than seven messages. Now, this suggests that online daters have a maximum number of people that they communicate with at any one time. So we're learning more about our online dating behaviour, but we're still not sure what effect all of this app dating is having on our mental health, because app dating is a bit like online shopping. We're presenting 2D versions of ourselves for others to make snap judgments. We become utterly disposable commodities. There are people on there that aren't very nice. The lowest is when you find out the person you're dating is still on the app. I think that's the lowest because that makes you feel awful, like you're not good enough. Then there's the ghosting, suddenly disappearing without trace and no explanation. I've had a few ghosts and I can kind of like almost <laughs> sixth sense it, I think. So I had one recently where I went on a really good, I went on two really good dates. At the end of the second date, I left and I was just like, he's just never going to contact me again. But How did you know? I just, it just felt like that. I don't know, I can't even really explain it. I'd love it if there was an app like TripAdvisor, but for men or women that you've dated yeah. that have done something awful and you can advise other people what <laughs> happened. A star rating. Yeah, exactly. There's bad behaviour and then there's the disgusting racism that's flourished online like the kind suffered by Ashton on Grindr. People would write in their bios um, quite like ignorant statements. They would say like, oh, no blacks, um, no this. They'd be like, no this, no that, no this, no that. And as a black person, when you're seeing like that in so many different profiles, like no blacks, it can kind of affect you because you think like, do people not find black people attractive? I mean, what, I mean what's wrong with me? I mean, like, I've even got like on here some screenshots from stuff that's actually happened. His response was to call me the N-word, and then he blocked me straight after that. I don't like human interaction. Human interaction, yeah, I know. WTF. Many app companies are trying to address bad behaviour. At this startup in Manchester, the team thinks daters want change. We were looking at Jigsaw and seeing that we cover every user's face with a Jigsaw puzzle, you might think we're a bit mad. We only cover their face, we know it's the most important part, mm -hmm. but it's, that piece is covered. Um, to incentivise that conversation that what is so important. Definitely in the early stages of dating apps, um, there was that, you know, it's instant access in the palm of your hand. I can get people, you know, people's profiles who I assume I can meet up with as quickly as possible, um, just thrown at me and I can go from there based on a photo. But people have become more mindful as time has gone on. Everybody's a little bit more self-aware about how they're using social media and online um, you know, platforms. And, and we see ourselves as coming in at the optimum time where people are looking for something a little bit more mindful, a little bit more meaningful. But even the most advanced technology has its limitations. Nick is looking for someone to help heal his broken heart. But algorithms that work great in big cities are pretty useless out here in Cumbria. His apps are found in matches in Scotland and Northern Ireland. Look, this is a really beautiful part of the world to live in, but I suppose it's a bit challenging when it comes to dating. You're talking about population density. Yeah. The least densely populated county in England, six times as many sheep as people. So yeah, that, that can be a bit of a challenge, yes. So do you just end up matching with people you know, people you've been to school with? That exact scenario. A childhood friend, um, it turned out to be his ex-wife uh, when we went on a date. Yeah, that, that kind of put a Is put that a embarrassing or is that funny or people might... Kind be... of both, but it did put a dampener on things, to be honest, yeah. The reason why I'm single is I lost my wife um, coming up three years ago. Uh, single for a good while after that and then it came a point where I thought I was maybe ready uh, to uh, at least meet people anyway. It's a strange kind of world to be 
uh, yeah, to get involved in. Um, I remember one of the odd things, the first time I went on a dating app, um, about a year ago maybe, um, deliberating so much over pictures, you know, it's like a left swipe, right swipe kind of system, and uh, then after a few weeks of that, it's, yeah, you spend less time over it. I think it can be, uh, it can be quite depressing, that whole scene, yes. Is there an alternative? Well, it's just the usual alternatives, but, you know, again, you're living in a county such as this, uh, less opportunities, maybe. It's harder to imagine a world further removed from Nick's life in rural Cumbria. London, a sprawling metropolis where millions of invisible threads are connecting people looking for love and lust. For kink stuff, there's Fat Life and there's Whippler. For swing stuff, there's KK, there's Heaven Circle, there's Fab Swingers, there's Field. There's a new one coming out called Wild, which is coming over from France. More users means more choice, more niche and speciality apps, like the ones for kinky and fetish sex. Alice is a swinger. She does threesomes and group sex, among other things. She's been on the scene for about six years, and the apps, she says, have changed everything. I got into it through these kind of networking and dating apps. I imagine it's a lot easier now to find like-minded people, to find suitable events. Your circle is a lot bigger, it's a lot more publicised. There seems to be a little bit of something for everyone. You have the completely vanilla conservative people who would never do anything, only have monogamous relationships. You have the tourists, the people who are primarily monogamous couples who fancy a little bit of spice. Maybe they'll come try something out. And then you have the, the lifestylers where they develop friends on the scene. They like who they are in that, in that setting. They like the person they can be. And then they very much get drawn into it. Niche apps have their place, but most users eventually want something less extreme and more permanent. We've lost a piece of cake as well. <laughs> Julie, a dentist from Manchester, was single and looking for love. But into her late 20s and having had no luck with finding a boyfriend, she felt time was beginning to run out. Then, Thank one you, Christmas a few years ago, she took her search for Mr. Wright online. One year, it was Christmas, I was sat with my flatmate, we were both single, and um, we'd watched Bridget Jones, and I found myself um, comparing myself to Bridget Jones. And I thought, this is me, I need to do something about it. And then I think an advert came on, and it was free membership for three months. There and then, I just signed up, I just thought, let's, let's do this, let's give it a whirl, and it worked. You really celebrated the fact that you two had met online through your wedding. Yeah, well, yeah, we did. So at our wedding, um, our table, um, the names of our tables at our wedding were all named after different dating apps. So our top table was Match.com. Then we had um, Plenty of Fish. We had Grinder because everybody knew that that that, that was how, how we met, and we kind of, yeah, we definitely wanted to celebrate it. Julie and Matt are now expecting their second baby. A new generation whose parents have probably met on a dating app. But who knows how much dating will have changed by the time they grow up and are ready to look for love.